Well, welcome back to Iowa, everybody, and our town hall tonight with Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley. We're going to talk now a little bit about family values and issues, including abortion. And we have our first question. From Sue in Des Moines. Uh, Sue, you have made up your mind or haven't made up your mind? I'm getting, getting there. there. You're getting there. <laughs> so maybe you're leaning towards the governor here? Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, what's your question for Governor? Hi, Sue. Hi, Governor. As a college-educated mom of seven, I am concerned about my young adult and teenage children coming of age in a society that no longer values life and the institution of the family or trusts in higher education. Describe your vision for America's family, one mom to another. Oh, love that question, and you're super mom at that. You know, I'll tell you, for me, I've always said that, and you'll relate to this, if I'm a good mom and a good wife, I'll be a good governor. If I'm a good mom and a good wife, I'll be a good ambassador. If I'm a good mom and a good wife, I'll be a good president. When my kids were little, even when I was governor, I would still be home five days a week to have dinner with them because I thought the family dinner mattered. Sundays were our days. We always were together on Sunday, and, and Friday nights were Haley family fun nights. And I think right now what we need to do is, one, it's okay to have God in your life and say that. I mean, I think I walk by faith, not by sight. And I think we should never be afraid to say that. You know, I always go back to the day, bef the, the Saturday before the Mother Emanuel shooting that was so devastating. I called for a state day of prayer and I was vilified for it. And I thought it was so important because at that time there was a lot of toxicity from the Obama administration and division. We were feeling what was happening. And I thought that it was important. Now I think it was divine. The fact that we had that day of prayer before one of the worst shootings that our country had ever seen, I think God saved us. You know, there was a reason on the heels of Ferguson that we didn't have riots, we had vigils. There's a reason that we didn't have protests, we had prayer. Because we had that in our hearts and on our minds. And I think that we have to always do that, especially now going forward. You look at our kids, they have more anxiety, stress, and depression than we've seen ever. We need to be there for them. And we need to make sure that they know that there are places that they can go that will show them that your faith can get you through this or guidance can get you through this. And so that's what we want to do is make sure that it's always about faith, family, and country. That's what it used to be. Our parents would raise us to be strong individuals. We would go to school and we would learn what we needed to be successful. We would go to church and we'd find our faith and our conscience. That's where we have to take our country back again. But you have not support. You said you wouldn't support, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, a six-week federal ban if it were to go in, into place. Uh, Ron DeSantis has said that, you know, you are too moderate on this issue. That's not what I said. What I said is, be honest with the American people. The only way a federal ban will pass is if you have a majority of the House, 60 Senate votes, and a signature of a president. We haven't had 60 senators in over 100 years. We may have 45 pro-life senators. So instead of demonizing this issue, the fellows just don't know how to talk about it. Instead of demonizing this issue, you have to humanize this issue and understand that everybody has a story. Our overall goal should be, how do we save as many babies as possible and support as many moms as possible? That way you take away all the divisions. Democrats have used fear in women when it comes to this issue. Republicans have used judgment. This is too personal of an issue to use fear or judgment. We need to talk about it in a way that's saving babies and supporting moms. And whatever 60 senators bring to me, at whatever level, we will support. Because the only way we're going to do it is if we find consensus on the federal level. And I think we will find consensus on banning late-term abortions. I think we'll find consensus on expanding adoption and good quality adoptions. I think we'll find consensus that doctors and nurses who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them. I think we'll find consensus on the fact that contraception should be accessible. And I think we'll find consensus that no state law should say to a woman that gets an abortion that she's going to jail or getting the death penalty. That's where we will find consensus. All right, uh, Terry. Terry is a retired farmer from Dallas County. He, um, have you made your decision? I've narrowed it down to uh, the candidates that we've seen here in Iowa that speak from the heart rather than a teleprompter written by somebody else. Okay. And who are those candidates? Yeah, who's that? 
Who are the candidates? Yeah, who are you narrowed down to? One is standing on stage right now, smiling, Woo! speaking from the heart. Well, what's and, your question uh, for the I've, governor? I've uh, heard DeSantis, I liked him, I've liked Vivek, but uh, I, I'm a proud grandpa. I know you're a proud mom. Let's talk about education. Yes. So, so tell me what differs you from the others. It gets us back to, from the other candidates in the Republican Party, it gets us back to reading, writing, and arithmetic rather than guns and uh, fentanyl. What worries me about education is right now in America, only 31% of eighth graders in our country are proficient in reading. Only 27% of eighth graders are proficient in math. If we don't do something and do something quickly, we're going to be in a world of hurt 10 years from now. And remember when I told you we wanted to take those federal programs and send them down to the state level? That includes education. We need to make sure we go back to the basics. We've got to make sure that our kids are learning reading, writing, history, science, math, arts, and that's it. We don't need to get these federal programs. And what happened is when they started to get it too big with federal, we've seen it from Common Core. We saw it with No Child Left Behind. They became bigger things that got away from the basics of education. When you send this down to the states, the resources that the states have they can decide where they need to go. So, for example, I want to put vocational classes back into our high schools. We need to teach our kids how to, how to be a part of the economy before they get out of school. Vocational classes in Iowa would be very different than vocational classes in South Carolina. Let the states decide that. When you go and you look at these other things that, the, that D.C. has decided are good for our states, that's the problem. What I want to make sure of is that when we move those programs down, we make it more state-centric. Secondly, we should have complete transparency in the classroom. No parent should ever wonder what their child is learning in the classroom. Every syllabus should be online for every parent to see. And every parent should choose where their child goes to school and what mode of education they have, because a parent knows best. And finally, I will say, we have to grow strong girls in this country. And strong girls become strong women. Strong women become strong leaders. And none of that happens if we have biological boys playing in girls' sports. We've got to cut that out. Thank you, okay. Governor. Let's bring in Steph Harold, who is retired from West Des Moines. Hi, Steph. Let's get a microphone over to you. There we go. Hello, Ambassador. Hi, Steph. And please thank your husband for his service. Thank you. I am very excited that you are wanting to bring up and tackle term limits. Exactly how do you propose to do this, since I can't imagine that most in Congress would want to shorten their stay? It's very true. You know, not only do I want to see term limits, I want to see mental competency tests for anyone over the age of 75. And I'm not being disrespectful when I say that. We all know people over 75 that would run circles around us. Senator Grassley's a perfect example of that. But then we know Joe Biden. And right now, Congress has become the most privileged nursing home in the country. These are people making decisions on our national security. These are people making decisions on the future of our economy. We need to know they're at the top of their game. And yes, I'm a strong advocate for term limits. The way we would deal with that, no, Congress isn't going to vote on it, so we're going to build them up to it. I will have a Haley term limits pledge that everyone needs to sign when they decide to run for office, incumbent or otherwise. And we will find out where they are on term limits. And then I'm going to give that information to the American people so that you know to ask that elected official about it and you know where they stand. And then when we get enough term limit pledges into Congress, that's when we will go and vote on it to make sure that we get term limits back in D.C. We will do it from the outside in rather than the inside out. All right, Governor, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.